Hey everyone, and welcome to Zenata Consulting's beginner series. Uh, this series is on Zoho Learn, which is Zoho's learning management system or LMS. Um, before I do get started, I wanna thank you for deciding to check out the video and supporting our channel. Uh, if you do find this content useful, please be sure to hit that like and subscribe button as that really helps us out and it'll make sure that uh, our content gets in front of you uh, when we put out new videos. Um, so this video in particular is going to be the second in our series here on Zoho Learn. Um, you know, in our first video, we covered how to create a space and how to create our manuals within that space. Uh, and now in this video, we're going to actually get into creating some of the articles and content inside of a manual and getting things actually rolling here. Um, so here we're starting in Zoho Learn and I'm looking at our spaces. So here's our web services space that we created in our last video. I'm gonna go ahead and open that up. And let's say we wanna get started here looking at our web development um, manual. And so the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do when we get into our manual here is create some chapters. Um, again, I'm kind of starting at the top in terms of the organization and moving down. So think through you know, how we wanna organize things before we actually jump into writing the content. It'll make things a lot easier as you go. Um, so maybe we wanna have a chapter for client credential management, web form best practices, and site performance optimization. And so we can create these chapters basically as places to store one to many articles. Because again, an article can be something really short or it can be something really long. And these chapters just give us a way to create multiple different articles that are all gonna be stored in the same kind of overarching umbrella. Um, so now that we have some of these chapters created, right? what we might wanna do is actually start creating our articles. Um, so here, I'm going to go ahead and create a new article. Um, if you do have like a file, like a PDF, HTML, something like that, you can go ahead and import that directly. Um, you can also build these from a template, which they do have some pretty nice and robust templates here. Um, you know, things like a standard operating procedure, FAQs, API documentation, things like that. Uh, Zoho Learn is a little new right now. I would anticipate this bank of templates is going to grow and grow over time. Um, if you do want to create a template for you to use on your own, you can do that under custom templates. I do want to highlight one little oddity is that they are unique for a manual. So you'd have a unique template for a specific manual, not for a space or for Zoho Learn as a whole. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and just create our uh, template here from scratch and we can walk through some of the editing options that we have. Now we'll notice here what it's gonna ask us to do is drop this into a particular chapter. And maybe I wanna create a quick article on how to use our stateless form for password collection. This is basically a little form that we have that doesn't actually store any data. It just writes it right over to our password vault. So it's a nice and secure way to get our clients credentials when we need them. And so now that I've created this article here, over on the left-hand side, we're gonna get a view pretty similar to Zoho Writer if you're used to using that tool. Um, so it's a full text editor here, dropping in things like images, tables, you know, videos, if you want to embed a YouTube video um, within this. You can also embed HTML and general blocks of code directly into these uh, documents. Let's say I want to get started. I'll give this thing a header, you know, and we'll kind of bold it out, something like... Right, and I can go ahead and start typing. Um, so we're gonna do a little Martha Stewart, pull this out of the oven real quick, and we'll be right back after I've added a little bit of content to this document. Okay, so now we've created a quick little article here that we can use to populate our manual. So I've just done a quick little bulleted list here of the steps that we need to take to go ahead and request a password from a user. 
Um, if I want to save this as a draft where no one can see it, I can go ahead and do that here. Um, in this case, maybe I just want to go ahead and publish it, which would mean that those invited users can access it right away. Uh, so I'll go ahead and do that now. So we'll publish this. It's going to ask you for a note to kind of specify what changes were made. This gets more important as you're making edits. When you initially publish it, we can just do something like V1 completed. Quick breakdown of steps. If you want to notify people that this uh, new article has been published or a change has been published to an existing article, we can do that here. In this case, I'm going to turn that off for right now. Perfect. And so now we have our first article published here to our web development manual under the client credential manual or management chapter. Um, as you'd imagine, you're going to kind of uh, consistently be creating these new articles and publishing them out to um, the relevant chapters and manuals where you need them. Um, now that we have this created, we can take a look at some of the things that we can do with this um, article. So if we wanted to go ahead and quickly drag an attachment in, you know, maybe uh, there's some images we want to add of the form or of where it is on the page, I can go ahead and quickly add that. Um, the users can rate if an article was helpful or not helpful. Um, generally speaking, that can be a nice way just to get some quick feedback from people as you're creating new content. Um, we can also leave some comments on this article. So maybe I want to leave a comment that says, this is just a B1. Please let me know how to improve this. And I can leave a comment here that other people could reply to. So someone could say, please add more images. And we can kind of comment and communicate about this particular article on the fly. Um, we can also bookmark this and favorite this, which will kind of have it show up in more places here under the knowledge list, um, as well as following it, viewing our version history saving it as a template, which can be really useful if you want to just quickly say, hey, I'm going to use a article that looks like this pretty often. So I just want to save this as a quick template and I can fill in the blanks later. Um, you can export any of these to PDFs, rename them, duplicate them, move them again to a different chapter or manual and so on from there. And so one last little step that I want to highlight here that uh, will be useful as you're adding more and more content is the ability to organize a manual from kind of a top down perspective. Um, so up here in the top right under these three dots when I'm looking at a particular manual, I can come down to manage articles and chapters. And this basically gives us a quick interface to drag and reorder any of this content. And I could even say, like, move this down to a different tab, right? So I could look at, uh, you know, dropping these in wherever they need to go without having to copy, paste, recreate things or anything like that. Um, through this interface, you also can create a new chapter. So if you find you're trying to reorganize things and you realize, hey, I'm kind of missing something that I need, you don't have to exit out of this reordering tool to create a new chapter. And so with that, I think we have covered here the core elements of working within a manual, you know, creating those chapters, getting them organized, and then creating content for those chapters in the manual, you know, with our rich text editor. Um, I want to thank everyone for watching this video. We really hope that you found the content useful. Um, if you do have any questions, drop them down in the comment section below. Uh, we'll be sure to try to answer those either just directly through our account or on our weekly podcast, The CRM Zen Show. Uh, we like to grab a couple of those YouTube comments and actually answer them live there. Um, before you jump off the video, please go ahead and click that like and subscribe button. That really does help us out. Um, and we'll make sure that our videos get shown to you when we put out new ones. Thanks again for watching.